That works. Wait a second. Technical difficulty. Okay, there's five basic requirements for each chapter in the DAV. These are basic uh, requirements that each chapter has to meet. And if you meet these five requirements, you will stay out of trouble. But these aren't the max that you can do. These are simply the minimum. Number one, you need to maintain more than 10 members in your chapter. If you go for 18 months with less than 10 members, you have a possibility of losing your charter. You must hold at least four meetings a year with the quorum. That doesn't mean you plan for four. You always plan for more, but you have to have at least four meetings with a quorum or you could lose your charter. You need to conduct officer elections each membership year. You need to submit an annual financial report. This is different than many organizations, uh, but in fact, the DAV is a little bit different than the Legion and the VFW and AMVETS. We are a 501c4 nonprofit, and that's considered a charity. And part of the charity function is we have to be accountable for our funds, and therefore each chapter needs to submit an annual financial report. All of these four items are referenced in Article 16, Section 6.4, Paragraph 3 of the National Constitution Bylaws. Failure to meet these four standards could uh, cause a chapter to lose their, their uh, charter. Now, I said initially there's five items. Well, yep, there is a fifth one. We need to submit a return for nonprofit. That's called a 990. Basically, we're a nonprofit organization, but every year you have to submit paperwork to prove that you're still in existence. This paperwork is required under Section 501C of the Internal Revenue Code. If you fail to meet this, this is the DAV doesn't uh, doesn't cause you a problem. Basically, the IRS, if you don't submit your 990 for three consecutive years, you will lose your nonprofit status. In order to regain that status, you have to spend some money and you have to spend some time and you have to submit the paperwork. So you want to stay out of that situation. Simply do your return for nonprofit every year. So what we're going to talk about right now is conduct officer elections each membership year. Basically, let's talk about what's a membership year. What is it or when is it? We hear a lot about calendar year, fiscal year, accounting year. We're talking here about membership year. If you know what the membership year is, please hold up your hand. <laughs> okay, we, we do know, all right. Ju July 1st to June 30th is the DAV membership year. Now, basically becoming an officer in the D DAV is a two-part process. The first thing is you have to be elected or appointed to your position, and it's based upon your particular bylaws. For example, Chapters have adjutants. The, the national organization says chapter or says that the chapter should either elect or appoint an adjutant. So it can vary by chapter. Um, and there are there are consequences you, you could say for whichever way you do it. For example, if you appoint your adjutant and that something happens to the adjutant and the position becomes available, you can just appoint another one. But if your adjutant is elected, and something happens to your adjutant, you have to hold another election. So we're either elected or appointed, depending on the bylaws. After we're elected or appointed, we have, we have to be installed. That means we actually take an oath that says we are gonna do the right thing. Basically, I promise to act and conduct myself as will affect the good of the order. Sometimes I think uh, we forget what's actually in that oath when we take it. The second thing is you promise to enforce and sustain, sustain the constitution bylaws of the organization. That basically means you have to understand what those bylaws are. So um, after, we're, after we're installed then, chapters must sub submit a complete officer election report within 10 days after installation of the newly elected, appointed, elected or appointed officers. Now this officer election report used to be mailed, but now chapters are required to go out to the national website and get this uh, officer election packet. So let's, let's talk about where we get this. 
And, and basically, the uh, this is referenced in Article 9, Section 9.2, Paragraph 3 of the National Constitution Bylaws. So it is in our bylaws that you must submit this report. <clears throat> if we go out to our uh, the DA, if we go out to the DAV website, DAV.org, you're going to see that this is the main page that you come to. What you do is you go over to the membership column and select membership, and you get a drop down menu. On the drop down menu, you select members only right there, and that's going to take you to this page. You enter your membership number and hit submit button, and that takes you into the next page where you can select uh, various documents. These documents are basically formatted in different groups and you can select on a particular group and it opens up a series of documents. I find the easiest way to find a document is you go to the bottom of the page and you select alpha order. And if you select that option, then it gives you a complete list in alphabetical order of all the documents that are stored out there. So you simply have to read through those documents and find the one that you're looking for. In this case, we're looking for the officer election report kit. So that's what we need to do. We need to download that kit. You can also get this kit if you, you like a lot of documents in DAV, if you just Google the document, you can find documents on the internet. So you could actually Google DAV officer election report and you'll get a, a variety of uh, options there. You have to be careful what you select. In, the, in other words, uh, in the first one here, we see um, we see where it actually tells us the revision number of the document, and that is the current one. But if we would have gone down to Officer Report DAV and selected that, we would have come up with a uh, Officer Report that is outdated. So you need to. I usually go out to the website to get my stuff, but uh, if you would happen to come across an officer election report, you always want to check and make sure it's the up-to-date one. So what's the what does the report kit look like? Basically, we have a page and a half of instructions, and then we have the form. First thing I do, as I indicated, uh, I check the, uh, the first thing I do is I check to make sure I've got the most current edition. Then notice here that this form, it actually tells us that it must be completed and returned within 10 days. And it actually cites the reference in the National Constitution bylaws. If you look at here where it says Article 8, that refers to departments. If you see Article 9, that's referring to chapters and Article 10 is refer referring to units. So all three of those organizations must comply and use this form. Um, also, we have to email this form to headquarters. Here's the email address. We can't put it in the mail anymore. Uh, we also need to send a copy of this form to our state department and send a copy to the nearest the national service office. Notice here that the, both the commander and the adjutant need to sign this form and need to date it. So if you're having an installation, a, a, you know, adjuncts, the existing adjunct has to kind of do a little uh, thought process and planning. Um, if you're having elections and installation on the same night, um, he, he has to do some work maybe to have this form prepared so it can be all done and completed at that, at that meeting. Otherwise, they have to get together at a later date and sign and date this uh, form. So there's some work on the current agent part to, to get this whole process, you know, I guess, done smoothly, I guess I would say. Okay. Um, Let's go to the top of the form. It's pretty simple in terms of um, what you have to fill out. You know, you got to fill out the chapter or department, the location, the date of the election, the date of the installation, address of your regular meetings, time and date of your regular meetings, the website address. A lot of times people leave this blank, but every chapter has a website. If you go out to the national website, you can see you, each chapter has a website, or you can actually have your own website developed in-house, but the, either one, there should be something in there. Fill in the chapter phone number. Now, here's something uh, off, let's see, what was that? It was the officer elect for, for what year? We actually have chapters that are filling this out incorrectly. Uh, what should be filled in here is July 1st to June 30th. 
because that is the membership year. The only unique thing you want to put in here is, is the year. I'm really surprised that the national doesn't just fill that in for us, but this is, it's always supposed to be July 1st to June 30th with the, just the change for whatever fiscal year, whatever uh, membership year we're in. In this case, this year it would be 2022 to June 30th, 2023. Simply fill in the officer information. You wanna make sure when it says membership code, that you act, that the person that's in that position actually is a member of your chapter. We've actually had chapters send in the report with the person's name and that person, and they wrote in the membership number, but that membership number didn't match the chapter. What should your membership number look like? Well, in Wisconsin, the first two digits are 48 followed by a zero. The next two digits should be your chapter number. Like in my case, it's 48019. And then it's followed by the individual individual's number, like in my case, at 004427. So you fill in the phone number, email and text, uh, pretty straightforward and what you have to fill in for each officer. Now note that the service officer recommendations have to be filed on a separate form and we're gonna talk about that. What is a complete officer election report? A complete officer election report has a commander, a senior vice, a junior vice, and an adjutant, and a treasurer. Those are the four positions that are actually specified in the National Constitution bylaws. If you do have some of these other chap, other if you do have some of these other, like a benefits protection team leader, it's not required, but if you have one, put his name in there. The membership chairman is usually, in most chapters, is the senior vice commander. Judge advocate's not required, but you might have one depending on the size of the chapter. What also you have to have filled in on the right-hand side is the, off, the officer authorized to receive mail. Uh, this is important. An example of why it's important is right now, most chapters have probably received their, um, their assessment or their annual obligation for the department. If you don't have a place on your your officer report to a play, an officer receive mail, you might not get this in a proper time frame to pay that assessment. If you don't pay the assessment, you cannot attend the state convention. So it's extremely important that the, both the national and the department and other chapters know who to know who to and where to send the mail. So the officer receive mail has to be filled in. Um, Let's talk about some additional mentions here. These election reports are due, as I said before, within 10 days of installation. However, if anything on that form changes, like an officer resigns, leaves, or becomes deceased, and he has to be replaced, the new, a new report is required. If your chapter changes the dates that they um, meet or the place that they meet, the, a, new, a new form is required. Um, so basically, when you do the when you do the new form, you write revised on the top and simply have to you know put in the information that it's changed. Now it's important to note here that if you download this document from the DAV National website, it's a fillable PDF. What that means is you can fill this form out on your computer and you can save a copy on your computer with all the information in it. And if you need to resubmit it because of a change, bring in the old document and just type over the change. You don't have to retype the whole document. It's the same way if all of your officers that are elected this year were the same that you had last year and no information has changed, just bring in the old document, type in a new year ending date and submit it. So it is a kind of a handy feature to have this as a, as a fillable PDF. So we talked about if you chapter has a chapter service officers, we have to fill in this additional form with the chapter service officer information. It's the same kind of uh, form that we filled out for the officer election report. It's important to realize that um, uh, chapter members cannot act and conduct work like a service officer until they've actually completed the department service officer training and they've been certified. So that pretty much covers the officer election report. It's due within 10 days after your, after your installation. So they're all gonna be due relatively shortly. 
Um, are there any questions?